Hello! Have you ever imagined a ship sailing over mountains? In China, this has become a reality thanks to astonishing ship lifts and canals. Massive vessels weighing thousands of tons seem to defy gravity, rising to incredible heights. It's hard to believe until you see it with your own eyes. But how can a ship that weighs as much as a skyscraper be lifted hundreds of meters above the ground? What kind of technology makes this possible? Let's find out! Dams are powerful feats of engineering, built to generate electricity, control floods, and store water. However, they also create serious obstacles by blocking the natural flow of rivers. This wall divides a river into two separate sections, the upper one, where the massive reservoir, and the lower one, where the water level is much lower. The difference in height between these sections can exceed 100 meters. Historically, the solution to this problem was the use of locks. The first locks appeared in China as early as the 10th century, during the construction of the Grand Canal, but locks have their limitations. For example, to lift a ship to the height of a 30-story building, you'd need a whole series of locks, dozens of them, which consumes a huge amount of water, takes up a lot of space, and requires time. That's where the ship lift comes in, an elegant and efficient solution. Unlike locks, a ship lift can overcome a major height difference in a single ascent. Imagine a gigantic elevator for ships weighing thousands of tons. Instead of spending hours passing through multiple locks, vessels can be raised or lowered in just a few minutes, saving both time and resources. One of China's most impressive engineering projects is the Gu Piton ship lift, the largest in the world. It can lift ships weighing up to 500 tons to a height of 199 meters, roughly the height of a 60-story skyscraper. The system includes three lifts, connected by canals and aqueducts stretching 2.3 kilometers in total. In essence, ships are literally sailing over mountains, a sight that looks absolutely surreal. But China isn't the only country using this remarkable technology. For instance, in Germany, there's the Scharnebeck Shiplift, built back in 1974. It remains the largest twin shiplift in the world to this day. In Russia, at the Krasnynarsk Hydroelectric Power Station, there is a lift constructed during the Soviet era capable of raising vessels to a height of 101 meters. Its operation is fascinating. A ship enters a special water-filled chamber, which is then lifted, along with the vessel in the water, up an inclined rail track. In Belgium, one of Europe's tallest ship lifts can be found, the Streppi Thieu lift, which raises ships weighing up to 1,350 tons by 73 meters. And in Scotland, there's the world's only rotating ship lift, the Falkirk Wheel, which connects two canals with a height difference of 35 meters. We'll also talk about it later in this video, along with China's record-breaking Three Gorges Dam Lift. Ship lifts not only solve complex practical problems, they've also become symbols of human engineering achievement. They vividly demonstrate that with the right technology, ships can literally sail over mountains. A watercraft approaches a towering structure along the canal and then sails right inside it. The building, of course, is far from ordinary. Inside, there's a massive lifting cable, two rows of winding drums, and reduction gears on both sides. In other words, what we're looking at is quite literally an elevator, but for ships. To someone living in a regular apartment building, this elevator might seem unusual and incredibly slow. Its interior is enormous, filled with complex machinery, yet according to its creators, it's precisely this intricate system that allows the Gupitan lift to raise or lower a 500-ton vessel in just about 10 minutes. In other words, within such a short span of time, an ordinary passenger ship can quite literally rise into the air, powered entirely by electricity. The maximum load the gigantic lift can handle reaches 1,800 tons. Naturally, heavier vessels take longer to lift, but who would complain when every ship ascends to an incredible height of 72 meters? That height can even vary, depending on the lower water level, sometimes reaching 79 meters. Just imagine the experience, being lifted the equivalent of a 26-story building while aboard a ship. It's no wonder some call the Gupitan Dam system an impressive feat of engineering, or even an engineering marvel. You could argue with such bold claims. After all, ship lifts have been built around the world for decades. However, you've probably noticed something else. 
There's not just one lift in this system, there are three, all connected by a giant aqueduct. After the first lift comes the second one, which raises ships to an even greater height, 127 meters. The operating principle is exactly the same. A vessel enters the chamber, waits for the system to activate, and then is lifted upward. Altogether, a watercraft passing through the Gui Piton Dam lift system ascends a total of 199 meters. Once the two main lifts are completed, the vessels still need to descend to reach the water on the other side of the dam. For that, the Chinese system includes a third lift located at the very end of the mountain waterway. This one lowers ships by up to 47 meters. The Chinese engineers had to find a way to integrate the waterway both into the mountainous terrain and into the entire multi-lift structure, a challenge that brought plenty of complications. But of course, the Chinese managed it brilliantly. They also successfully built the second section of the route, which actually passes through the mountain itself. There's no need to wonder how they pulled that off. China has no shortage of tunnel boring machines. As a result, they now have a navigable water route both through and between mountains, stretching 2.3 kilometers in total. Constructing this colossal system came at a hefty price, $777.5 million, but the outcome is nothing short of spectacular. By now, you've probably realized that the entire system of aqueducts and shiplifts was built for one main reason, the construction of the Gupitan Dam. Looking at this dam, which was built between 2003 and 2009, one thing immediately stands out. It's an arch dam that instantly brings to mind another Chinese mega dam completed not long ago by Haitan. The shape is almost identical, and even the location is somewhat similar. However, in terms of sheer size, today's hero is definitely smaller. The Gupitan Dam, with its unique shiplift system, reaches a height of 232.5 meters and stretches 557.11 meters across. Meanwhile, Bai Haitan soars to an incredible 289 meters, with an overall length of 709 meters. So, in general, the Gupitan Dam and hydroelectric station aren't particularly remarkable, except, of course, for that spectacular navigation system that allows ships to quite literally float above the mountains. This naturally raises the question, why invest so much time, effort, and money into such a massive project in the first place? First, let's take a look at where the dam and its navigation system are located. The site is so narrow and unsuitable for ships that using traditional locks was out of the question from the start. Moreover, in the case of the Gupitan hydroelectric station, the height difference turned out to be so extreme that engineers had to abandon the idea of using a single large ship lift altogether. Lifting vessels that high would have been both too slow and too dangerous. But then, why build a dam and a hydroelectric plant in such a difficult place, where a simpler and cheaper project would have made more sense? Let's look at Guizhou Province, where the dam and its relift system are located. The province lies on the Yunnan-Guizhou Plateau, with an average elevation of about 1,100 meters. The region's topography can be roughly divided into three main types, plateau mountains, hills, and basins. However, a staggering 92.5% of its area consists of mountainous and hilly terrain, which is extremely challenging for building any kind of conventional transportation infrastructure. Despite that, over the last 10 years, Guizhou has constructed 8,000 kilometers of railways, 36,000 kilometers of highways, and about 40,000 bridges, five of which are among the 10 tallest bridges in the world. Of course, one could argue that they didn't have to build a dam in such a difficult spot at all, but the hydropower potential of this region is enormous, about 18.7 million kilowatts, the sixth highest in China. That's why local authorities in Guizhou are eager to make the most of both natural resources and China's infrastructure budget. As a result, along just one river, the Wu River, there are eight hydroelectric power stations with a combined capacity of 8,500 megawatts. The Gupitan Dam became one of them, as the leadership simply couldn't ignore such a promising site for hydroelectric power generation. Now, you might wonder, 
Since Guizhou has plenty of rivers, wouldn't it have made more sense to reroute ships along other waterways instead of interfering with the dam's operation? Let's take a closer look at that next. The Wu River is a tributary of the Yangtze, which holds an impressive list of titles. It's the longest and most water-rich river in Eurasia, the third largest in the world by discharge, and the fourth longest overall. It's also the longest river entirely within one country. The Yangtze flows through one-fifth of China's entire territory, and about one-third of the country's population lives along its banks. Meanwhile, Enterprises in the Yangtze River Delta produce up to 20% of China's GDP. Naturally, such a major river serves as a vital transportation artery, carrying both passenger and cargo traffic. It's no surprise, then, that every Chinese region not yet connected to the Yangtze wants to be linked to this grand national waterway. Guizhou has that opportunity because, as we've already mentioned, the Wu River is one of the Yangtze's tributaries. That meant the province needed to develop its energy infrastructure while also becoming integrated into China's water transport network. Enter the Gupitan Hydroelectric Station and its shiplift system with a total throughput capacity of 3 billion tons of cargo per year. So despite the enormous costs and engineering challenges, the region ended up with the best possible solution, and the rest of us gained an incredible spectacle proving that sailing over mountains is more than just science fiction. And those ship lifts capable of raising 1,800 tons? That's already a record-breaking achievement. Unless, of course, you know about one more lift. Can you guess which dam it belongs to? Naturally, the Three Gorges Dam, China's gigantic world record holder. Its ship lift can raise vessels weighing up to 3,000 tons, and that's truly massive. Of course, grand capabilities come with grand dimensions. The ship lift at the Three Gorges Dam features a chamber about 122 meters long and 18.3 meters wide. It holds a volume of water roughly equivalent to four Olympic-sized swimming pools, plenty of room for almost any vessel within the stated weight limit. This massive elevator can lift a fully loaded ship 113 meters above the ground. While that's not a record compared to today's multi-lift Gopitan system, it's still an astonishing feat, especially considering it's done by a single lift. The process isn't exactly fast. The Three Gorges lift takes around 40 minutes to complete one ascent. But keep in mind, this one lift hoists an enormous weight to a considerable height, and it does so safely and reliably. The brilliance of Chinese engineering truly shines here. The lift uses four sets of symmetrically arranged drive mechanisms with gears and racks that hold the ship chamber firmly in place at four points. This design eliminates problems caused by water tilt or oscillation inside the chamber and minimizes the risk of tipping. The engineers also ensured that the entire system remains safe even during emergency situations. But the Three Gorges lift isn't the only ship elevator in the world that inspires awe. Let's head to Scotland where, in 2002, engineers built a completely different but equally fascinating solution for connecting two canals. It's called the Falkirk Wheel. Originally, the Forth and Clyde and Union Canals were connected by a system of 11 locks, but those were dismantled decades ago. For almost 70 years, the two waterways remained completely separated until the construction of this ingenious rotating lift in 2002. From the start, designers proposed a bold idea, a Ferris wheel-style structure with four gondolas for boats. The concept was striking, but ultimately didn't meet the needs of British Waterways, the organization behind the project. The final design stands 35 meters tall and uses two gondolas, each holding 300 tons of water, allowing the wheel to move a total of 600 tons per rotation. The most fascinating part? The gondolas are perfectly balanced because each boat displaces its own weight in water. What does that mean? The wheel requires surprisingly little energy to operate, reportedly no more than the power used by eight electric kettles boiling water. The Falkirk wheel remains the only rotating boat lift of its kind in the world, proving that not only China can build incredible feats of engineering that let ships travel in the most extraordinary ways. That's all for today, friends. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like, share your thoughts in the comments, and we'll see you next time.